Um, if you could formally move for leave to introduce I, the I, I move for leave to introduce the bill. Last Count Corla, I should start by saying that this bill is uh, co-sponsored by yourself and by uh, Deputy Thomas Pringle. Um, and it arises out of the Israeli response to the horrendous attack on Israel by Hamas of the second of the 7th of October of last year. Israel, uh, the, the, the attack was a, a barbaric attack, uh, which was one uh, in complete flagrant violation of all the norms of war and conflict, and indeed one that was devoid of any shred of humanity. Israel is, of course, entitled to defend itself. Israel is, of course, entitled to seek to weed out those who attack it in that manner, or indeed in any manner. What Israel is not entitled to do is to mount a campaign in violation of its commitments under the Convention uh, on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. It is not entitled uh, to act in violation of international humanitarian law, and it is particularly not entitled to act in disregard of the International Court of Justice and its orders. And unfortunately, there is a, a real risk that that is what is now about, or that is what has unfolded uh, in, um, in Gaza. It is also uh, what is increasingly unfolding in the West Bank. And as we speak, it is unclear whether or not Israel will mount an attack on Rafah. What is clear is that in the event that it does so, the gates of hell will open. And there is little that anybody in this House can do other than to pass legislation preventing this state from trading with the state that acts in violation of its uh, international commitments. In the bill, uh, a state in violation of obligations to prevent genocide is rather tightly defined as um, a state in respect of which an application institution proceedings against it has been submitted to the International Court of Justice concerning alleged acts within the scope of Article 2 of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, where the International Court has concluded that it has jurisdiction to entertain the case and that some of the allegations are capable of falling within the provisions of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide and the International Court of Justice has ordered provisional measures under Article 41 of the Statute of the Court creating international legal obligations and which measures the International Court of Justice subsequently found necessary to reaffirm in an order of that court. It also says that a state shall not or shall no longer be, as the case may be, a state alleged to be in violation of its obligations under the Genocide Convention, if it, the case in which it is alleged to be in violation of its obligations under the Convention is removed from the general list of the court. Occupied territories are defined in a similar way as they, uh, as they were in the Occupied Territories Bill, which has previously come before this House, uh, which uh, passed a number of stages, uh, and which is inexplicably held up with nothing happening. Uh, at the moment, notwithstanding what we see unfold before our eyes. Uh, I, I should also add that one of the reasons that I have heard posited, although I have never heard an official reason from the government for the fact that that Occupied Territories Bill is, is delayed, is that trade is the exclusive competence of the European Union. And that may be the case, but trade is only the exclusive competence of the European Union insofar as it is in, in accordance with the treaties. And the treaties do allow states to take their own trade measures in pursuance of international law and in pursuance of uh, their human rights obligations. Uh, my colleagues in the independent group wrote to the Commission asking that the EU Trade Association Agreement uh, be suspended in light of what was unfolding before our eyes. We provided uh, various reports of uh, international NGOs and also UNRWA and video footage. We wrote on the 24th of November, received no reply, wrote again on the 12th of December uh, to the, um, uh, the Directorate General for Trade uh, and again received no reply. And we finally received a reply in February uh, basically saying that the EU condemns in the strongest possible terms Hamas, and uh, as do I for what it's worth, and that it was looking into the matter. 
looking into the matter is not sufficient in light of what is unfolding. So the bill uh, basically uh, has extra, extraterritorial jurisdiction, provides for a, a prescription on importing uh, goods from a state in violation of its international commitments or the occupied territories, a prescription on the sale of goods, a prescription on the provision of services other than humanitarian services you, and a prescription on extraction of resources from a relevant occupied territory. So, Count Corl, I ask for leave to introduce the bill. Is the bill being opposed? No. Well, it's not opposed. So, the motion for leave to introduce is agreed and I would ask the Deputy to move that the second stage be taken in private member time. In the absence of the Government taking on the bill, that I so move. I so move. Gar market. And will Shishin Enthia, is that agreed? Oh, yes. Gar market Enthia. Gar market.